Hello everyone and welcome to our 1.0 lesson on points, lines, and planes. These are some of the foundations of geometry and so we're going to look at three different vocabulary words to get started today. The first word we're going to look at is point. And so here's the three things you need to know about it. It names a location, it has no size, and it's represented by a dot. And so I think of this like dropping a pin on Google Maps. Um, whenever you drop a pin, it saves a location for you. Um, and that location has no size, meaning that if I were to drop a pin at my house and drop a pin at the freshman campus, it's going to have no size. Even though the freshman campus is much bigger than my house, it is just indicating an address on the map. It's a spot on the map. Um, and it's represented by a dot. And so when you name it, you're going to name it with one capital letter. So I would call this drawing, this thing right here, I would call that point A. You can either write out P-O-I-N-T or you can just call it with a dot, point A. Um, and so that how you write it is going to be important. And um, something to consider is why does it matter how we name them? If I said, go bring, go pin the tail on the donkey on these points right here. The first question you'd ask me is which one? I'm like, go pin the tail on the donkey on that point. You'd be like, well, which one? Well, as soon as I throw an A, a B, point C, point D, point E, point F. As soon as I say, hey, go pin the tail on the donkey on point F, now you know where to go. So that indicates the location. And we talked about in class how that is why um, we have names as well as individuals. When you have a class full of 24 students, um, it would make it very hard for to talk to each other if you didn't know each other's names. So it's like the identity of the point. Okay. All right. Then we have something. We stood um, in class. I had y'all stand um, all of y'all are points. Um, you held a point above your head, and I had y'all arrange yourselves like the rows in my classroom, and y'all got y'all really close to each other, and we connected each other with yardsticks, and we said that that whenever you put a bunch of those points next to each other in a straight path, that that is what a line is. So a st it's a straight path. It has no thickness. It extends forever in both directions, and there are infinitely many points on a line, and so um it extends forever in both directions. We know that because it has the arrows on the end. So it cannot be measured because of these arrows. That means it goes on forever. So a line is not going to have a length. It's also not going to have a thickness because this line is made up of infinitely many points and points have no size. That means that the line is going to have no thickness. And that always bothers people because they're like, well, Ms. Hall, what if I change the thickness of this marker? That's going to look way thicker. In um, geometric terms, we obviously know that we can get one pin that is thicker than another, but a line in geometry is going to have no thickness. It's made up of points that have no size, and it's going to extend forever in both directions. So how do we name it? We talked about in class how we name it with any two points in the line. So I picked different random groupings of two people in the row, and I had them name like AC or CA or CB. Any two points on the line can name the line. So we could name this line XY. Let me do that in a different color. That's fine. X, Y, and then you draw an arrow, a, a line over it, or Y, X. Okay, those are the same. Um, or, or you could use the lower si lowercase italicized letter. So I could call this the one that's not like the others. We talked about this in class. The letter that's not like those two others. X is a point on the line, and Y is a point on the line. Those are both capital. But the N is going to be in lowercase um, italicized letters. That's like just like I call it the lazy way to name it because it's like if you had a ton line in. If you had a ton of lines and I said, I want you to, I'll give you $100 if you go point to the line I'm thinking of right now. It would be hard to do because there's a ton of lines happening right here. And it would take a while to name all these lines. But if I threw letters next to them, lowercase italicized letters, and I said, okay, now go bring this to line E, you would immediately know to go to this one. So it just makes it a little bit faster, especially when you have a ton of lines and different diagrams. All right, and then we had a plane. And here are the things you need to know about a plane. A plane is a flat surface. It has no thickness. Um, it has infinitely many points on it that have no size, so it has no thickness to it. And it, it extends forever in all directions. So this is important to note. 
it extends not just in two directions, in both directions like a line does, it extends in all directions. So we did, we actually brought a twin size bed sheet to class and we had students grouped together in a, um, in a triangle, three different points. And then we had them spread out, spread out, spread out and make it kind of like um, the parachute like you had from elementary school. And that plane, we could picture it going on forever and ever and ever. So it's a flat surface, it has no thickness and it extends forever in all the directions. So if you picture it kind of like saran wrap rolling out and rolling out and rolling out. Um, that is a flat surface. We used our desk as an example of a plane. And so it takes in, through any three points, there is a plane. And we know that there are infinitely many points on that plane. There are infinitely many lines on that plane. And so that was our vocabulary. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to do some practice with it. Because it does, it takes some uh, practice to work with the notation or how you write it. So let's name the line in all the ways we possibly can. First, let's see which of these things is not like the other. Well, the M is lowercase, and it's supposed to be italicized. And then we have the points that are actually on the line, A, L, B. We know that there are more points than just those three, but those are the ones that are listed in the diagram. So the lazy way to name this line would be line M, line M. But you can also name a line with any two points on the line. So A, L would work. You could uno reverse card that and go L, A through any two points. Those, all of these would be the same line. So L, B and B, L and then A, B, and B, A. All seven of those would be the same line, just different ways to name it. All right, now this was a little bit tricky. This was a diagram that I give every year just to show students that we have this plane. This plane is called plane P, so that's the lazy way to name it. We've got the script letter. Oh, I did not do that. Y'all need to name that up here. Okay, so what are the ways to name this plane in our example up here? Um, we name it with three points not in the same line. That's what I talked about, like with the triangle. So looking at this, these are the points that are on this plane that are in the diagram. And then you can name it with the, cap the, ital the uppercase italicized letter. So I could call this plane P in my picture. Um, and then if you want to use any three points on the line, we would call this plane um, KJL. And when you connect those, those form a triangle. So those form a space. And so we'd call this plane KJL, or you could write out plane. You could also go JKL, doesn't matter what. Word. So JKL, LKJ, all of those would work. So when we name the plane down here, the lazy way to name it is plane P. I know I can use that because it is not a... Um, point on the plane. It is just a way to name it, a quick way to name it. And then in this next one, when I am looking at this picture, it's a little bit tricky. And the reason it's tricky is because this line that's listed on the plane is solid, meaning it's flat. It's on the plane. However, we notice that the other line is like this and it's dotted. What this indicates is that this line is going through the plane. So I took in class, I took my pencil and I stabbed it through the sheet of paper and we talked about how what this actually looks like in the real world is you've got this line that is going through the plane. So it looks like a pencil. Um, and we've got our eraser up here. And we talked about how, if this is the pencil, it's stabbed through the paper. And so we talked about actually how this point E, while it looks like it might be on the plane, it's not. It's like the, um, the lead of this pencil. And then point A is the eraser. So it's point A is actually happening not on the plane. So what we did to fix this, to make this a little bit easier to picture, is we scribbled out point A and we moved it up here. And we scribbled out point E and we moved it down here. And the reason we did that is because when you go to name this plane with the three letters that make a triangle on the plane, any combination of those, it's really easy to accidentally grab A or E, even though A is not on the plane and E is not on the plane. The only letters that are on the plane are going to be B, C, D, and F. And so when we wanna name that plane, we could go B, C, F. We could go uh, B, D, F, any of the ones that make, that form a triangle. What we cannot do is we cannot call it plane BCD. And the reason we can't call it plane BCD is because that those are collinear points. And we talked about how in, um, in class, if we have three people standing in a straight path, that makes a line that doesn't make a plane. They'd have to stand in a triangle to create that flat surface. 
And so we even talked about my, um, my teaching table that I teach from has three legs and the way that those legs are formed is in a triangle. So if I had those legs next to each other in a straight path, the table would not stand. All right, and then we covered some vocabulary, just a little bit of extra words. Um, collinear are points that are on the same line. Non-collinear are points that are not on the same line. Coplanar is points that are on the same plane. Non-coplanar is points that are not on the same plane. So in my diagram, if I wanted to name a set of three collinear points, K, L, and M are collinear while K, L, and N would be non-collinear, set of three. And we talked about how any two points are uh, collinear. You can always connect two points with a straight path, a straight line. Um, and so that's why this asks you for three. Okay, in our diagram, our next set of diagrams name a set of three collinear points. Um, so several options here, but we've got uh, D, B, and E. The order does not matter when you're listing points. I'm just listing a set of three. A set of non-three collinear points would be like D, B, and C. When you connect D and B are collinear, but D, B, and C, if I were to connect those, those would not be a straight line. Okay. Um, C and E are collinear. If I ask you for a set of two collinear points, C and E would be collinear because there's a line that exists between the two of them. And so any two points are collinear, but when you have the set of three, you need to make sure when you line, when you connect them that it forms the straight path. And then we talked about our three postulates. We talked about how postulates are, um, are like rules in geometry, um, accepted statements of facts. And so if two lines intersect, when they intersect, they intersect at a point. So if I have line M crossing line N, they're always going to cross at a point that is on both lines. And so I talked about it like an intersection in class, like whenever you, I know a lot of you have started to drive. And so um, this point, if I were to live 360, its location right now, point A exists on street M, but point A also exists on street N. It's in the, um, it's happening in the intersection. And so in that intersection, that intersection becomes a point. Okay. Um, if two planes intersect, we did this in class and we actually even showed an example with our hands, but this, this plane R is crossing this plane P and when they intersect, they have all these points in common in the middle and when you connect those, that makes a straight path and that forms a line. So two lines or two planes intersect in a line. And we did this with our hands. We had our hands crossed and we looked at where our fingers formed that straight line um, down the middle. All right, and then we said through any three non-collinear points, so I can't put them in a straight line, but if I have three non-collinear points, I can always draw a triangle through those, and there is a plane that exists through those three points. And we talked about those sunshades that you see at a lot of restaurants, and like I know at the, um, the city center in Vestavia, um, they have them just to create shade on different tables, and they have them strung up with different strings. These shades create um, shadows and um, shade under the um, tables for people to eat, and it's because they have three points of, inner, of um, different attachment, and so those three points create these triangles, and those are planes. Those are flat surfaces. So that is a real world example. We know that planes um, and geometry extend in all directions, but there's a plane that exists through those um, triangular shades. And so they anchor them, like they'll anchor them to different spots to create the shade that they want to create. All right. And so we are actually, we did some practice with the back of this the next day in class. This is just extra practice. Um, we did talk about this picture. We'll do more with this later. Um, and then we had homework was at the bottom of the paper. So I will save this just for some extra practice and I'll upload the answer key to that. But your homework is the bottom portion of this um, page.